We've got a couple more announcements for the midterms towards the end of the year here. One is good. Okay, the one that's on the screen here. Another one that's funny. And then just an overview of the Democrats and how fucking dire their situation is. But first and foremost, we're going to start with the good stuff before we have a laugh. Senator or State Senator Doug Mastriano. You might remember him from the election challenges of 2020. Okay, well, I guess I kind of just kind of trailed on into 2021. You know, he, he was the guy who was out there trying to get Pennsylvania to do something, okay? He's going to be running for governor, okay? Because Tom Wolf is term limited. Thank fucking God, because there are only so many more grandmothers out there that can be killed off by his fucking coof policies. So I guess he'll probably be running against, you know, Lurch there, the guy who, um, it's funny how that shit always happens. The assistant governor, the vice governor, I forget his name, but the big tall motherfucker who actually was running down and trying to chase after a black guy in his neighborhood with a shotgun. You know, the, the good compassionate Democrat that's out there. And so it looks like those two are going to be squaring off because I don't know who else is going to be out there and nobody else is going to have the name recognition from it. So we'll see. For more than a year, people around Pennsylvania have been calling State Senator Doug Mastriano governor in expectation of him running for the seat. He made it official on January 8th in Gettysburg, declaring his candidacy for Pennsylvania governor. More than 1,100 people attended four hours of speeches from high-profile Republicans at the event, including retired Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. Oh, God, how many times did he bring up Q? Stop it, Mike. You're ruining your legacy. Uh, President Donald Trump's former national security advisor. I was he ever officially or was he there for like a couple of days i can't quite remember who said the nation is at risk and everybody knows that i'm sure he said many other crazy things but that's fine and now it's time for action from everyone christian recording artist danny goki read a song off of his phone i guess i don't know perform numerous christian so this sounds like total fucking cancer dude nothing against you know christian music but something against christian music uh also uh, speaking we're radio host wendy bell don't know who that is republican candidate for maryland governor daniel cox good luck Pennsylvania candidate for the U.S. Senate, Kathy Barnett. Okay, and a host of others. Mastriano and his wife, Rebecca, endorsed Barnett for Senate. That's a good sign. Barnett returned words of support from Mastriano, uh, being one of the many to point out that where... Oh, when the pandemic began, many other uh, le state legislators were silent, but Mastriano spoke against the business closures and the bank or blanket mask mandates. Uh, Pennsylvania, at least to my recollection, was one of the first, if not the first state to lock down. Okay. So if he was at the forefront to saying, ah, I don't know maybe that's kind of stupid um that's a guy who should be running the state just saying he advised pennsylvanians to walk as free people or else watch their constitutional rights be taken away mm, fair enough uh, the line has become the mantra of his campaign mastriano is a retired army colonel combat veteran He's a fighter. He was commissioned in the United States Army in 1986 and served on the Iron Curtain in West Germany. All right. So did he actually see real combat? No, I'm, I'm not going to criticize him too much. I like Doug. Uh, while also along the East German and Czechoslovakian borders, he, he's been around for a minute. Mastriano witnessed the end of the Cold War. He deployed to, or deployed to Iraq for Operation Desert Storm in 1991 to liberate Kuwait. Give him some American freedom. Thanks, W. Or HW, rather. His regiment led the attack. I don't care. Who's he up against, okay? You could read down his resume, but like I said, I like the dude. A list of other Republicans have announced their candidacy for governor. They are Scott Martin. Don't know who that is. Jake Corman. Lou Barletta. Guy uh, Chirochi. Uh, Joe Gale. I just like him for the simplicity of his name. Charlie Garrill. Uh, Bill McSwain, Jason Mon, Jason Ritchie, too many Jasons, uh, John Vetri, Dave White, and Nichi Zama. That's a bad harsh consonant to vowel ratio that you have there, my dude. Republicans vote in the May 17th primary for the candidate that they want on the ballot in the November 8th general election. Oh, Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro is the only Democrat running for governor. Oh boy, that's going to go extremely well for him because Josh Shapiro is a total fucking spurg. Oh, and I guess, um... Andre the governor isn't um, running. I guess he got scared off because of his multiple controversies that came to the forefront, but whatever, that's fine. 
so yeah go doug he seems to have the highest name recognition but again i'm not in pennsylvania nor am i even remotely close to it i'm just saying he's got the highest profile there and people have actually you know wanted him to be running for governor for a while so it seems like he's been primed for this run and now he's peaking at the right time seems to make sense and it'll make for an interesting run because josh shapiro was out there banging the drum about oh, no evidence of widespread fraud 2020 no 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 he was he was one of the popular faces that was out there doing that kind of shit fighting back so it'll be interesting how this shit shakes out because you take a look at some of the uh record er, records from previous gubernatorial elections in pennsylvania and yeah tom wolf was elected by slim a few multi or er, few point margins uh, both times because in order to become governor he defeated an incumbent who i don't really remember i just briefly looked at the results of this stuff by a shade under five points and then he did a little bit better in his re election campaign but how much goodwill has been gone from that and i don't know the quality of candidates he was up against beforehand so we'll see what happens if it's going to be shapiro mastriano it's going to make for a hot contestation for the gubernatorial race and you already have a full republican and or yeah full republican house and uh, senate in pennsylvania so let's see if they go for the clean sweep it's probably going to be something pretty popular over and over again in 2022 with the midterms but we'll see but like i said we have one good one quality announcement for a run in 2022 in doug mastriano now we have a hilarious one american idol alumni clay aiken running for congress again in north carolina how could somebody with such high name recognition not get fucking elected oh because he's stupid uh former american idol contestant clay aiken is once again running for congress throwing his hat in the ring then bending at the hips in order to pick it up as a democrat for north carolina's proposed sixth sixth district which is expected to be heavily left-leaning <gasps> clay aiken who is aiming to succeed retiring representative david price oh good left-hander uh announced his bid monday in a video posted to his social media accounts in the video he pledged to promote progressive values including addressing systemic racism yes from a guy who's most known for um losing to a black guy so he's still not better some 20 years later ending gun violence how this is not very popular in north carolina but you do you and tackling climate change are you going to take up those talking points? It's like hurricanes and tornadoes that hit North Carolina. They're all caused by climate change. He also attacked Republican uh, members of Congress, marrying Madison Cawthorn, who's actually popular in his writing, but okay. As a white nationalist. Oh, what an ableist bigot. Uh, Aiken, who is openly gay, couldn't tell, uh, played down his celebrity persona. Oh no, uh, the public conscious does that plenty. He doesn't need to. And pitched himself as an ordinary citizen. I haven't had a hit record in a couple of years. Uh, these days, my life looks a lot more like yours than Justin Bieber's. <laughs> you were never that popular, stupid. Uh, but one thing that has never changed is how much I love my home state. I didn't know you were from North Carolina. And I don't think you ever made that um, terribly popular yourself. But okay. Uh, Aiken said progressive uh, oh, progressives have lost ground in North Carolina in recent years, so you're just going to try to lean really hard into something that continues to fail? Okay. Citing voter suppression and the bigoted transgender bathroom laws. Once again, election integrity, very popular in North Carolina, and uh, transgender bathroom laws? Okay, cool. Uh, welcome back to 2014. But if you're talking about all of those... Um, the things that are actually popular in the cultural zeitgeist at the moment uh transgender athletes as much as i find this absolutely hilarious kind of like how you're sitting on an upside down stool in your video um those are uh also very popular with people uh banning that practice but whatever in the video he also cited prominent gop house lawmakers people who aren't in his state so that's weird marjorie taylor green and lauren bobert i wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole. Ew. Girls, they're icky and they have cooties. But this is the level of Democrat you're getting. Uh, because every other one... Okay, there's 26 of these fucking crusty old bastards retiring. If it wasn't painfully obvious in 2020, the depth on the bench for the Democrats is uh, worryingly shallow. Okay? So they're really at a crossroads here. Do they take a hard left and continue into the failings of progressive leanings? That's possible. Okay. 
because it's very popular in their uh, city strongholds, but outside of that, they don't gain any fucking ground anywhere, unless they enshrine it through various means, and I'll let you decide on that one. Or do they try to take a centrist approach, and then they um, try to course correct that way? We'll really see once these primaries get hammered out in May, it looks like that's when that's going to be happening, but Representative Air... Ed Perlmutter, who I've at least heard of before, becomes the 26th Democrat, okay? And I'm recording this a couple of days early, so it could be more, but 26 already announced their retirement in 2022. That's a lot. That's a fucking lot, okay? Ed Perlmutter has added his name to the already expansive list of Democrats who have announced that they will be retiring ahead of the 2022 midterm elections. Most of these retirements have thus far come from the House, where Republicans are expected to put on a real challenge to Democrats and who are also looking to keep their majority. A real challenge, they, it's literal single fucking digits for the Democrats. It's, it's a certainty at this point, and uh, all you need to do is look at the indicators that are out there. Unless, of course, you want to take a more conspiratorial approach, but that's for you to decide. In the Senator, oh, in the Senate, sorry, where Democrats have a more favorable election map, sort of, kind of, there are fewer Democratic senators up for re-election, but I get it. There's only been one retirement out of uh, Patrick Lee, uh, Lee uh, uh, President pro tempore in the Senate. I'm old as fuck, and I just want to go home and play with my Batman action figures. Uh, the slew of Democratic retirements in the House has led some to speculate that there is a connection between the difficulty the Democrats face in the 2022 elections and the growing list of retirements. Yeah, because these aren't exactly in like deep blue districts. Some of them are, but some of them is like Ed, who's out there in Colorado, which is just kind of experiencing a crisis of conscience because outside of Denver and Boulder, it's still a red state. It's just, unfortunately, Denver and Boulder have all of the voting power so when it comes to senators and when it comes to governors you're a little bit fucked if you're a republican in the state but outside of that your say gets reflected a little bit better during a speech announcing his retirement Perlmutter brushed off any such speculation oh my god even though the numbers are they're slightly tighter we will win that's why you're walking away at 68 years old christ you're still a young man in the democratic party I never shy or I never shied away from a challenge, but it's time for me to move on because this challenge is just too much and I don't want to be a quitter. I just want to step down before there's a challenge. Perlmutter, who represents a competitive district in the Denver suburbs, ah, the suburbs, right, that um, ended up flipping in places like Virginia and almost in New Jersey for Republicans. Mm-hmm, yep. Would have faced a steep challenge in holding on to a seat if he runs again. The National Republican Congress or congressional committee one of the top organizations in the gop electioneering uh considers poll mutter's seat highly vulnerable in 2022 but what do republican think tanks know uh promoters political career began in 1995 enough with these fucking assholes in 2006, Perlmutter made his bid for the U.S. House of Representatives. I don't care. He's retiring. Fuck him. And finally, just a little more background before we wrap this one up. Amid redistricting across the country in the wake of the 2020 census. Yeah, this will be the first election where that takes effect. Ooh, it's going to be brutal. Uh, the GOP may again have a chance at taking Perlmutter's district, which they have largely ignored since 2010 to their own detriment. Fucking Republicans are retarded. Uh, the Democratic candidate for Perlmutter's district will face a steeper challenge and Perlmutter has historically as neither party will have an incumbent's advantage during the upcoming election. Similar opportunities for Republicans are springing up across the country in the midst of one of the longest list of Democratic retirees in years. In 2010, the Republicans gained around 60 seats but they failed to take back the majority. Weird how that shit happens. That never happens when you lose the presidency. It never has in history, except for 2020, which is, I've been informed once again, that is the most secure and most safe and most effective election in human history. Trust the science, whatever. Only 17 Democrats had plans to retire. Okay. And it's weird. You take a look at the new uh, freshman Republicans that came in. All of them are young. 
like Madison Cawthorn, the youngest in history, he's like 26 or some shit like that. Now, Lauren Boebert, who's not an old woman. Marjorie Taylor Greene, who just looks old, but isn't that old. They got 26, okay, 25 in the House Democrats fucking biting the dust. I don't know, man. The current landscape uh, where Democrats only have a five-seat majority. I didn't know it was that slim. Fuck, 26 House Democrats have now announced their intentions to retire. This includes Representative John Yarmuth, a Demo er, Democrat from Kentucky. Interesting. House Budget Chairman and a top Democrat official, among uh, many others, in seats that Democrats cannot afford to lose. But they will. But they will. If everything goes fine. During a Sunday night appearance on Fox News, GOP leader Kevin McCarthy suggested he believes the final numbers of retire retirees may top at over 30. It sure seems like it, because Nancy Pelosi is kind of floating the idea, but then again, she's going to be holding on so that she um, can pick her successor. Just saying. NRCC spokeswoman uh, Courtney Perel said simply Earl Perlmutter knows House Democrats won't be in the majority after the midterms. He's making a smart decision to retire rather than lose the election. Yeah, a lot of them. A lot of them are deciding that, yeah, no, uh, public life's not for me. Just weird, uh, weird coincidence when it comes to that timing. But we'll see. Uh, 30, yeah, that seems about right because you're still, what, months away from the uh, primaries. Probably see another slew right over Easter. That's what I'm thinking. Probably, mm, if, I'm, if I'm a betting man, 33. 33 sounds about right. But we'll never know. We'll never know until everything gets finalized. But I'm sure we'll be talking more about the primaries of uh, the midterm elections because it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, because, oh, the spurgening is going to be so great. Uh, November 9th, I guess, because the election is going to be on the 8th. It's going to be beautiful. But a little bit more uh let's go to new york okay normally we talk about crime there but uh i guess we got crime of a different sort there not of the violent just of the uh voting persuasion with that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo I want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone